a nurse practitioner. But I had a stroke in August 2009. And I was in the reading group and I was in the aphasia group for two years. So I'm just gonna kind of give you my little spiel. And um, I have some products that I've come up with that helped me. And um, as I've seen patients, um, they've asked me what I did because I look so good and it doesn't look like I had a stroke. But let me tell you, it was such a long struggle. And that's my boyfriend, CJ, sitting behind videoing me because I'm going to be <laughs> speaking at an even bigger thing in February. And so just needed some practice and it's kind of intimidating <laughs> yep. when you couldn't talk before and now talking to everybody. So this is Dakota. This is my um, daughter. She's a red fox lab and she's 11. But we bought this house so she could swim in it. <laughs> so this is the story. Everything started in August 2009. We went to Atlanta for the weekend. Um, we went and saw the Braves game Friday night. Saturday we went to Wet n Wild. Sunday we went to the zoo because I'd never seen pandas and you can see pandas in Atlanta. <laughs> so it was a busy weekend but it was a fun weekend. Um, the Braves and me at the water park. <laughs> And then this is what happened. Um, Sunday at the zoo, my head started hurting. And I never really had headaches before, but it was like the worst headache ever. Well, once I got in the zoo, I forgot my head hurt. <laughs> but we were driving home for four hours and my head was killing me. And I was taking Tylenol and ibuprofen around the clock, trying to get my head to stop hurting. Well, I was supposed to go to work and I worked in the emergency room in Orangeburg. I was supposed to go to work on Monday. And I thought, this is a perfect excuse to call off work. I have a really bad headache. <laughs> so I called my boss and he said, come have a head CT. And I said, I don't need a head CT. It's just sinuses or something. My head will feel better. So I went to sleep that night. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I called one of my ER doctors working. And I said, it's really hurting bad now. I'm going to take some Lortab that I had left over. Really strong pain medicine. And he said, oh, Kirsten, you can take two or three. And I said, I'm just going to take one. And I finally could go to sleep. So I woke up the next morning and CJ asked me how my head was. And I said, actually, it feels good. And he went to work. And then um, about an hour later, I woke up and I couldn't see out my left eye. And I freaked out and said, something really is wrong. <laughs> so I woke my brother up and um, said, we have to go to the hospital. So we... He drove me to Orangeburg to the um, ER there, and this was my head CT. <laughs> um, maybe it looked like y'all's head CTs. I don't know if you guys got to see what your CTs look like, but right there is the size of a plum, and that's the blood clot that was in my brain. Um, did any of y'all have blood clots? That's why it's so great to talk to y'all, because you understand. <laughs> so here's where it all began. Um, I got care flighted from, MU from Orangeburg to MUSC, and I spent a month in the ICU. Um, they, while I was there, they punctured my lung, um, and I was on the ventilator for 11 days. And they went in through my groin and tried to do the first seat surgery, um, did they go in through y'all's groin to try and get yes. the clot? Um, so that was fun. They thought they got it. Um, then the next surgery, a couple days later, was the craniotomy, where they take part of your skull out and try to suck out the clot and then put the rest of my skull back in my head. Any of y'all have that happen? <laughs> and so then um, about a week later, um, luckily, I had a really good morning nurse, and he saw that my pupil had blown on my eye, which meant I was bleeding. So they went in and they took this whole part of my skull out and put it in my stomach so that it could, my brain could swell and I wouldn't die. <laughs> and luckily, that did the trick. <laughs> I didn't die. But um, I had the last rites given to me twice while I was in the hospital because they didn't think I was going to make it. And my poor parents, that's my mom. This is my cousin. She's from Connecticut. She flew down once I was able to 
walk and talk, get out of the hospital. But um, you can see my head was shaved. They shaved me a total of three times and then finally had to shave my whole head. Everybody says that's when my mom finally broke down and cried. <laughs> but um, there's my helmet. This is what I got to wear for six months because my skull was in my stomach. And if I had tripped or fallen, or because I'm pretty klutzy, um, <laughs> I would be really gone because <laughs> that your brain's just hanging out there. So this was my helmet and talk about getting made fun of <laughs> because little kids are so honest and just tell you like it is. <laughs> so I get pointed at and laughed at, but it was okay. This is what's hard to envision is your skull out of your head. So unfortunately, my family didn't take any pictures of me. I am a picture fanatic. And they were so worried about me, they didn't take any pictures with me all plugged up and tubed up. But I would have loved them to. Because <laughs> I don't believe any of that really happened. <laughs> so this is what your head looks like without a skull in it. And then this is what my stomach looked like with my skull in my stomach for six months. Um, pretty cool. I just think that's neat. Yeah. And if you don't know anything <laughs> no. about it, it's neat to see the picture. Picture's worth a thousand words. So I turned 30 that January. I still had to wear the helmet. You can kind of see how messed up my head is there. But I didn't want to have surgery again. I had had three surgeries. I said, I don't know if I can survive a fourth surgery. Just leave the thing in my stomach and we'll, go, we'll just call it even. I'll wear the helmet the rest of my life. Well, the neurosurgeon didn't think that was a good idea. But I wanted to have my 30th birthday and live through it and be able to enjoy it. So we went to the Great Wolf Lodge so I could go down more water slides. I just wore my helmet. <laughs> and the kids thought I was cool wearing my helmet going down the water slides then instead of being a, you know, a, a nerd wearing the helmet. Um, I also got cleared to drive because it was time to renew my driver's license. And I was terrified because I couldn't read and I had to go take another test again. Luckily, the rehab lady was really good and she read the questions to me because I know what your, the answers are. I just couldn't read it and I couldn't read it fast enough, which I'm sure y'all all, all yes. experience and uh, know how fun that is. Yeah. Uh, how much of an audition? Uh, um, yeah, I time? had, I barely passed the test because um, mine over here, especially, can barely see this. Can barely see this. But um, she said, just when you're driving, make sure you look twice. Look twice. <laughs> um, but I slid under the um, thing, and I'm, luckily there's no DMV people here, but I kind of cheated, because if you kind of look to that way, you can kind of see the peripheral. Yeah. Um, and so I, I got six X's, but I had to, to be able to pass as long as I didn't get seven X's. So I was cleared to drive. Then here comes the fourth surgery, putting the skull back in my head. And luckily, um, I went to MUSC, and so I had lots of good friends at MUSC who kind of hooked me up. And I got the surgeon to take pictures of my brain while he was in there. Wow. So this is my brain <laughs> um, on the operating table. And you can see all the plates I have now. I had five plates in my head and um, to keep me all tied together <laughs> and again I was more with it so I could take all kinds of pictures and said snap away <laughs> so this is the fourth surgery which it also sucked it was not fun um, the surgeon told me that there was a chance I could regress because I was making improvements in those six months I was talking a little bit better um, wasn't reading still but um, you could kind of understand me and he said, there's a chance you might go backwards. And I was terrified. That's why I didn't want to have that surgery done again. Because I didn't want to go the other way. I wanted to go the right way. So when I'm um, in the room, I've been, I've had to spend the night. My brother and my boyfriend came in the room and they hadn't seen me since I woke up from surgery. And I said to my parents sitting there, I said, I'm going to get them. So they walk in and I go, no, 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 no. And you should have seen, I should have videoed their face. 
They were so scared that I had regrets because we were all so afraid of that. But actually, it did better. Um, my, my brain kicked into overdrive and I could remember like drugs and medicine and stuff like that better having my skull back in my head. But while I was in there, they um, blew both of my um, IVs because I had to have all these high antibiotics because they're putting my skull that's been in my stomach back in my head. And then this is um, in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning, they send me for a CT of my head to make sure they put everything in the right place. But you know, everybody's asleep, but I had a good time because <laughs> I'm riding down, getting rolled down the road at three o'clock in the morning. And then this is where they messed up my IVs and um, my mom said, you can, you can um, refuse, Kirsten, because they had got me and got me and I was on like fourth or fifth antibiotic and I finally said, no more, because <laughs> there was nowhere else for them to go. But um, here's my friends that came and saw me. You can see CJ has a big beard then. <laughs> but um, this was more fun being in the hospital than it was six months ago when I almost didn't make it. Everybody was sad and crying, but I was laughing and joking. <laughs> and there's Dakota. She came and saw me while I was in the hospital too. You see my IVs. And I'm in a wheelchair because I had five blood clots in my leg too. Um, again, six months ago. So I had to learn to walk again as well. I forgot to bring that up. Um, then I had to wear this beautiful tummy protector because where my skull had been in my stomach for all that, those stitches and part of my skull in there, if I sneezed or coughed or bent over wrong, I could open up my stomach. So this was fun, <laughs> wearing this little tummy guard again. <laughs> and then this is me getting kicked out of the hospital and man, I'm ready to go. But I wasn't allowed to wash my hair for a week because of all the stitches they had put in. So, ew, gross, look at my hair there. And again, me, I like to take pictures. <laughs> but this is the crazy thing, so cool. This is how, I don't know if y'all are religious, but God is so good. I finally got to stay at my house. I had to live with my parents for almost two years. And when I had that next surgery, I went home and stayed in my own apartment. And when we woke up that next morning, it had snowed in Columbia. And it doesn't ever snow in Columbia. And so, me and Dakota had a blast playing in the snow with no helmet on. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's just amazing how things happen that way, you know? Everything happens for a reason. I don't know if y'all have gotten to meet um, Carl, the man who came up with the aphasia movie. Have y'all seen the aphasia movie? If not, see the aphasia movie. I think you can um, rent it online even and get it. Um, he is so good. He had a stroke as well at 41 and he was an actor. And so he and his friends had this movie. It's called Aphasia. And it's got a really funny scene in it where he's trying to go through the drive-thru and he's trying to order his food and he wants to get like a, a slushy. So he can't say slushy when he pulls up. So he drives around and like a couple days later comes back through and he says, I'd like a slushy. And she says, what flavor? And he says, oh. So he drives back around and he says, I'd like a cherry um, frosty or fleshy. And um, then the lady says, what size? And he's like, oh. So around again, and finally, he gets through the drive-thru a couple weeks later and says, I'd like a large cherry fleshy. And um, he gets it, he drives up and he gets his, you know, his icy or his, um, I keep messing up, fleshy. <laughs> fleshy. Um, but these are all the speech pathologists I saw along the way. So I started out in rehab seeing a speech pathologist to help me talk, swallow, um, read. And then they were coming to my house and um, 
I wasn't doing anything but laying in the bed and watching the prices right. So finally, one of the doctors said, she needs to get up and get out of the house. So then they, I would go and see them in Rock Hill. Well, it got to the point where I was really good at playing Scrabble. I could pass every Scrabble test there was. And again, the neurologist said, we need to move forward. So then I went back to the hospital and started seeing a speech pathologist there. And I didn't have a great rapport with that speech pathologist, but she was pregnant. So she went on maternity leave and I got a new speech pathologist. Well, I thought the first one wasn't that great. This one made me cry every time I went. So I went about three or four times just crying. Just, she wasn't nice. She was negative, made me feel bad about myself. And um, where I had had all really good positive things. So I know I wasn't the nicest person because I wasn't happy with everything I had been through. But thankfully, I said to my mom, I'm not going there again. I'm not gonna get beat up and see that lady again. They had another girl come in and she was a younger student, a newer speech pathologist, and she was awesome. She's the one that got me to the movie. Um, it was in Charlotte and I actually got to meet Carl. And then she also found USC speech and um, language here. So that's how I found Charlie and Sarah and got to go to the reading group and got to go to the aphasia group and be around other people that had been through something like I had been through, which was huge because it was just me that had gone through something horrible and awful and, you know, couldn't talk and couldn't read and um, couldn't walk. And it was bad at first too. Um, I'd be in the group and I'd cry in the group because you had to read out loud. And I was never a good person to read out loud in school and whatnot. But um, the more I did it, and the more I practiced, and the more I came, and the more I got closer with my friends in the reading group and my friends in the aphasia group, the better I got. And finally, it got to where I was better in the group. I wasn't the, the worst one in the group. And um, it just, it really helped me get to where I am now to be able to go back to work. Um, Sarah really hooked me up where I had one-on-one -on -one with a speech pathologist then and they would pretend like they were patients so they'd come in and give me um, something that was wrong with them and I'd examine them and diagnose them and that way I was able to get my life back and be able to go back to work as a nurse practitioner so there's the day June 30th 2011 when I finally was cleared to go back to work and I had gone back to the emergency room and shadowed with some of my doctor friends and they let me train again or practice again um, until I was cleared to be all by myself again so I was so excited to be able to work again then this happened so my head wouldn't click my head wouldn't close I had this funky odor and my head was leaking so I had to have another surgery this is the fifth surgery um, again not excited to go back and have surgery again <laughs> and this is how gross my head looked then and this time he wouldn't let me um, take the stitches out for a month they left the stitches in my head for a month because it just wouldn't close and you can see there's my stitches and he didn't have to shave my head again. I was so scared he was gonna shave my head again. But he, you can see, worked through all my hair and everything. And then in a month, my hair had basically grown back where the stitches were. But um, it worked, it did the trick. <laughs> so then this is five years after the stroke. I went and cut my hair really, really short. You can see how long my hair was. And I donated it because somebody else needed it than me. And I knew how bad it was when I didn't have hair. So I do that about every, about every year. It takes me about a year and a half for my hair to grow out long again. I did it again in August, so that's why it's a little short again. But, um, okay, so I'm back to work. 
Um, I'm going in people's houses and I'm seeing patients now. Well, I run into people that have had a stroke or I've had a brain injury or had some memory loss. And I tell them my story because they're like me, sitting at home in the house, sad, watching the prices right, not getting dressed, not wanting to leave the house. And they say, no way, you look so good. What did you do? And I go over this spiel again and tell them this, but it got old telling the same story again and again and telling them where to go and where to find the stuff that I did and what worked for me. So I came up with strokeflashcards.com because these were all the things I had to go through to kind of get my life back. I was able to become independent and live alone again. I was able to go back to work. I was able to remember some stuff. The memory got better. It's not as good as it used to be, but it's better. Um, I was able to walk. I was able to talk again. I was able to drive. And thank God I'm, I was alive. I survived this. And then I was finally able to read. Um, so these are my little tools that I used. That very first speech pathologist that was coming to my house gave me these cards flashcards and they had a picture on the front and a word on the back and I hated those cards because <laughs> I couldn't get the words right but the more I practiced and the more I did it the better I got and so finally I was done with those flashcards and I wanted more I needed more flashcards but there weren't any more to get so I dug around and I found like kitty flashcards with like Bozo the Clown on them and things like that. But I'm an adult. I wanted adult cards. So that's what these are. Um, the first are animal cards because I love animals. And I could never get those 10 animal words they wanted me to get in two minutes or whatever. But the more I practiced these cards, the faster my words got. And I could say hippopotamus. I could say fox. I could say tiger. And so. Um, I have these cards that I 